What do you get if you cross Italy's finest sour beer brewery with Britain's finest sour beer brewery? Gin? Wait, I'm here at Lerbig in Stavanger, uh, and they're one of my favourite Norwegian breweries who also host What's Brewing. It's an amazing festival where head brewers from all over the world come in, bring their beers and show up a little bit. Now, another thing they always do is collaborations. Whenever these guys come over, they've got some of the world's best brewers all in one place. So there's collaborations going on all week, and I chose to come along to the Wild Beer and Lover Beer uh, collaboration, two of, two of the world's best sour breweries, uh, and Lerbig of course getting involved as well. And the idea they've come up with, as you're about to find out, is pretty wacky. So I'm here with Volta of Lover Beer uh, and Brett of Wild Beer. Uh, what are we making? It looks like gin. Yeah, it's uh, we're, so we're we're making a beer. Um, definitely making a beer, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a lot more. It's inspired by gin, mm -hmm. gin and tonic. It's going to be stronger, above maybe eight, eight percent, eight or more, eight or more, eight or more, eight or more. We should um, put that put that on the label. Yeah, eight or more, eight or more, <laughs> um, uh, and. Let's see, some of the botanicals that we're stealing from some typical gin recipes. Uh, we have, uh, for example, a co coriander. Coriander, yep. Uh, yes, typical. Uh, it's a juniper. Uh, Which is really common in Norway, right? Yes. It's kind of everywhere. Yeah. Yes. And this is uh, Angelica. Uh, that was, used it. That was very, really nice. That's the nice first time I've ever really used yes. it. This is a grind of paradise. It's also used in the Saison beer. Yep. Uh, modern Saison. Uh, that is an orange powder, sweet, mm. very, very good sweet for, orange for powder. Us. Yeah. This is a, uh, I think it's a chin, uh, kina bark. Uh, Chincon is the name. Uh, oh, yes, it's uh, used in Italy for uh, some kind of uh, special wine uh, that is served. And uh, the last, uh, I don't remember what is this. Uh, <laughs> That's elderflower. Oh ah, yes, elderflower. elderflower. Yes, elderflower. Yeah. So in brewing. We have a great opportunity. We've got so many different opportunities to add flavor. Yeah. Yes. So you've got hot aspects, you've got boiling, and then you also have more steeping, so like lower temperatures. Cold, cold steeping. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, well, but even in, like, say, so like, well, one thing we've done is we've used the bark from juniper yep. trees to those, that went into all of the water that we've used. Yep. So, so in all of, of our hot Instead of tank, plain water, you've you're using juniper branch water. Bruno, yes, it's juniper to that. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we were able to kind of extract flavor from the very beginning. Yeah. Overnight, um, and then, but then you can use it in the boiling stage, or you can use it in the fermentation stage, or you can use it in the um, like maturation stage. And all of these different points have different knock-on effects. And the one reason we, because we have used. Uh, branch of Junta uh, during the for half the water of Nancy because the historical Norway used the branch of Junta uh, for filtering the beer. Uh, now there is a filtering. filtering yeah yes. so in the mesh tun instead of having what's called a false bottom yep. yes. or like a perforated plate or a sieve you would just put in all branches of juniper. Yes. Then you'd put your mash in, the in on top. On, on on top. top. And, and then you would and this is a, so that would always have a juniper edge. Yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's a technical, but also the, the, the flavor of the yeah. juniper branch yeah. coming in the beer. So there's method this to your madness. Yeah, there is. And this is part of this is part of the exciting thing of kind of like through beer through the industrial revolution turned into quick and stable yeah. products. That's just like a industrial product, and we've lost some old processes that maybe they were they're archaic or maybe they're slow or if inefficient but um, but actually you're losing a lot of flavor yeah. that you we, we never knew we used to have because I never had never had a beer that was made that way and I don't think anybody alive did has so let's make it
Every time I think I know how to brew, I realize I don't. Going to start in a in a modern fermenter. Yep. Um, yes, steel. Stainless steel with um, a yeast strain that I hadn't used before, um, but these guys, but Lurvik have, and so it's going to be Bastogne. Bastogne. Yes, Bastogne is a typical of uh, French saison or uh, the garde. Right. It's a, it's a farmhouse uh, egg from uh, the, the Flemish. Uh, French area, you know, south of that. Right. Um, and then after and steel, then it'll go into old cognac oak vats. They still smell of cognac, um, so that'll be that'll be nice. Um, and it'll be in there with uh, lactobacillus, and then also I've brought over some barrel cultures from the wild beer co over right. here that um, the Lurvik guys are now going to be propagating up, and they're going to put that in. Why are we doing this to the chimney? Uh, to prevent airborne bacteria. To prevent it in a sour beer, now that's, that's unusual. So Volta decided that there weren't enough ingredients in this beer, so he's added a yogurt pot, uh, which we're now trying to fish out currently unsuccessfully. <laughs> yes, better. Here? No. So when, how, how long is it going to take? When, when's the beer going to be finished? Six months. Yeah, six, six months. months. Minimum. Yeah. Maybe. Because yeah. usually these videos I follow up with another video going and here's the beer about yeah. four weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Sit there waiting for it. No, no, it'll be it'll be one in the making. It's like yeah. grand designs. <laughs> yeah. It's with gonna it. be like more like I'm grand Kevin. designs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so what a brew day, what a beer, a gin and tonic based ale, sour ale, dry hot with yogurt pot. Um, I've never learned so much on a brew day and I've never seen so much uh, so, so much time spent at the whiteboard, so much time arguing about different types of yeast at different temperatures, uh, only for the one of the world's best sour brewers just to drop a yogurt pot in. Um, I have no idea how this beer is going to turn out, I don't think they have any idea how it's going to turn out either, but I really cannot wait. It's nine months, I can have a child by then, who knows, um, but I guarantee we will have it on the channel and we'll have the verdict and see if it tastes a little bit plasticky. Uh, we've got lots more Norway content popping up on the screen now. Uh, it's been an amazing, amazing trip and there's just one more trip for me uh, remaining and that's the What's Brewing, so watch out for that.